Welcome to the video guys. Last night Rebecca Wrong Daily provided us with yet another car crash interview from a Labour MP. Tying herself up in knots trying to answer questions from Andrew Neil on the Andrew Neil show. She is lambasted for many reasons including support of Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party policies, claims Labour could never win an election if they moved to the centre, and of course, says the British public was not intellectually capable of understanding their policies the way the Labour Party put them forward. Which means, yes guys, the Labour Party still think you're too stupid to know what you voted for. So, let's check out what she had to say on the Andrew Neil show. Rebecca Lombilia, the country's facing the threat of a pandemic, requires leaders that can handle an emergency, What's the biggest crisis you've ever managed? Jess Phillips's monthly menstruation. Well, I've led one of the biggest shadow departments in government, uh, the business department that That's spans all the way. Well, it, we're tackling the climate crisis, and one of the key elements of our manifesto yeah. was the Green Industrial Revolution, which was one of the right. biggest crises. But that's crises. drawing up a policy. You weren't in government. You weren't managing the crisis. It was providing the answers to the crisis, Andrew, and in doing so, providing jobs, creating industries, and tackling the economic crisis that we face at the same time. So what's the biggest crisis you've handled? I'd say trying to tackle the climate crisis is up there, given that it's one of the biggest issues that we face. And if we don't tackle it, either by a Labour government taking power or pressuring the Conservatives to take action, we're not going to have a world to hand on to our children. It's, it's hardly handling that. a crisis. It's drawing up policies in opposition. Well, guys, that was literally the first question from this 30-odd minute interview that she had with Andrew Neil yesterday. And he's already skewering her from the very beginning asking her what crisis has she actually dealt with, because as leader of the country, you might have to deal with one. And given her answer, I think she was coached by Diane Abbott for this interview, because it's not based in reality. She claims to have dealt with a crisis relating to the so-called climate crisis, when, as Andrew Neil points out to her, you were in opposition, so you were just writing out policies that meant zero to anyone except for you, of course. It was just a way to make it look like you were actually doing something, when we all know there is literally nothing you or anyone in the Labour Party can do. The Conservatives are in government, they decide policy, end of story. I do love how she claims, I do love how she claims writing those policies was actually tackling the crisis, when no, you really wasn't, the government of the time are tackling the crisis. If Labour was to have won the election, do you think they would let the Tories decide policy? Does she really think the people of the UK are that stupid? Oh wait, actually, yes she does, as we will hear later in this interview. But I would say Rebecca Long Bailey in that clip proved she has never tackled a crisis and was doing the age-old Labour trick of just talking complete bullshit. Now let's move on and check out our next clip. You see, people wonder why you think you could be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to leave that in there. It was just too much of a smackdown by Andrew Neil. And in 2019, you went down to your worst defeat in living memory. We did. Yet you began your campaign by giving, giving Jeremy Corbyn 10 out of 10 for his leadership. What would you have given him if he had won the election? Well, that was quite a cheeky interview at the time, and I was asked what I thought of Jeremy, and I've always said that Jeremy is an honest, decent, principled man, but we did face the worst defeat that we've ever seen as but a Labour Party. you give him party. a perfect score. As a person, and I'll always give Jeremy top scores for the decent human being that he is. But you were but we asked lost... about his leadership. Well, we lost... I mean, now that you've had time to reflect, how would you mark him now? We've got to be honest. I'm not going to mark anybody out of 10, Andrew. It's not top trumps. We're talking you did about already. Here. Right, so you might remember her saying Jeremy Corbyn gets a 10 out of 10 for leadership a few months back when she was interviewed. Now, of course backtracking hard on that, saying she meant as a person, when, as Andrew Neil pointed out during that clip, she was asked about his leadership, not him as a person. And given some of the things that he's done and the people he's called friends, I wouldn't consider him an honest, decent man. By the results of the 2019 election, the electorate didn't think he was an honest, decent man, that is for sure. Rebecca Long Bailey, I think you've been smoking too much of that Corbyn Easter pipe. See, you said that it would be a disaster if Labour moves to the centre. 
and that the party would never win an election again, you said, if that happened. What's the evidence for that? The Tories are trying to lay a trap for us. They've tried to paint themselves very cleverly as an anti-establishment party. Boris Johnson did that all yeah. the way through his leadership campaign. Sure, He's but done what's it all the, the evidence through... that if you moved to the centre, you would never win an election again? Because we've got to provide those answers to the issues that people face in their lives. What's the evidence? The evidence is that and there's no person within our communities that doesn't want a better quality of life, whatever I'm their sorry, income. That's not Andrew. evidence and it's not answering the question. I'll ask you again. What is the evidence that if you moved more to the centre, Labour would never win an election again? I think you only need to look at the declining vote share in Labour support over the last 20 years in terms of where we moved to and how people lost faith in our politics. What happened in this general election... That's was because you moved to the left. You won three not elections all, from the centre. Not at all. Where you we won were, three elections from the centre. We did, and our vote share declined. Every election after that, Andrew. <laughs> but after a third election, that always happens. The fact is, you won three elections in a row. You've, since you left the centre, you've lost four elections in a row. So there we see the left wing lunatic trying her best to dispel the idea that moving back towards the centre or the right would help the Labour Party win an election because we know she is as hard left as Jeremy Corbyn and therefore will sit there and defend her ideology till she's blue in the face, even in the face of evidence that Andrew Neil provides, when, as you heard, she could provide none. I love how many times he pulls her up on it, refusing to let her get away with talking the complete nonsense that she did. He asked you to provide evidence moving to the centre would never win you an election. When, as we all know, and the evidence states that you heard Andrew Neil read out, the Labour Party, under a centrist kind of leader in Tony Blair, won three in a row. While, ever since then, they've moved further left and ended up losing four consecutive elections, which I'm pretty sure will be at least six before they stand any chance of actually winning anything. Her argument that looking at the decline in vote share for Labour after the last 20 years only goes against what she is saying more and more. Just over 20 years ago, Tony Blair won the election. Now, obviously, since his first election, it's going to drop for however long he stays in office until eventually he resigns or leaves. Then, of course, it changes over. This is the way the British political system works. They have a couple of terms, sometimes three, and then it switches to the other party, almost like clockwork. So her decline in vote share answer is nonsense, as Andrew Neil points out. With this time being different to the past, we may not see a Labour government, in my opinion, for a very long time, especially if any of these lunatics are the leader for very long. It goes to show just how ideologically deluded she and the Corbyn Easters really are. Talk about brainwashed by John McDonnell and the Corbynated Chicken. Organisations such as the International Monetary Fund, the OECD, which has advocated investment in the so economy the by the government wrong. to spur on prosperity the and productivity. No, we didn't explain our argument coherently enough, if I'm honest. And we spoke in quite intellectual terms sometimes that were quite alien to many of our communities when we should have been speaking the language of aspiration. Mm. Oh, Rebecca, it's nice to know that the voters weren't wrong, but we weren't intellectually capable of understanding how great the Labour Party policies were. Why don't you fuck off? Can you imagine sitting on TV and saying, the British people don't have the intellect to understand what you are saying? And you actually think the British people are going to get behind you should you become the Labour leader? Let me tell you something. The socialist spunk trumpets that make up the Labour Party lack the intellect to understand what the British people want. Instead, only care about their own agenda, which luckily will keep them out of power, hopefully for the rest of time. I cannot believe this dopey bin has actually sat there and said, we spoke about our policies with too much intellect. And when you first ran for election in 2015, in the general election then, you leaflet said that you became a solicitor for the NHS to help defend our health service. But that's not true, is it? I did work for a law firm and the department that I worked in only did work for the NHS. So yes, but true. you weren't a solicitor for the NHS 
And it doesn't seem that you defended the health service either, does it? Well, no, what we did was only work for the NHS. I was acting right. for the NHS. And what you Absolutely. did working in this department for the NHS, in this Manchester solicitor's office, is that you worked for a lawyer, a senior lawyer in that department, who helped draw up PFI contracts which handed ownership of NHS hospitals to a Luxembourg investment vehicle. So Andrew O'Neill's got her by the proverbial balls right now. She's been running around claiming she was a solicitor for the NHS, when in actual fact she worked for a law firm that was helping to sell off parts of the NHS under the PFI deals that Tony Blair put in. Meaning she directly profited from the NHS being sold to a Luxembourg consortium. £190 million of it in total. That's not her making £190 million, that's how much the contracts were worth. Imagine running around spouting all this crap about the Tories selling off the NHS when you were one of the people who directly benefited from that happening. Which as we all know was a Labour government who started it. It's rather funny how these Labour MPs forget what they did in the past when they need to get elected. I wonder what else these lowlifes have been running around lying about. Actually, I think from now on, I will just take everything they say as a lie until proven otherwise. It's probably the best way to go about it, I think you will agree. But during that interview, Andrew O'Neill absolutely destroyed her. Not that he really had to, because she provided us with a car crash interview all on her own. Her answers were either nonsensical and not relevant, or outright talking complete bullshit. Which I have to say was a theme throughout the 30 minute interview. I just included a couple of minutes here to get the essentials from it, which is all you really need to see. It was a complete shit show. But no more than we have come to expect from the snivelling shit weasels that are the Labour Party. But on that note guys, I am going to end the video there. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube, or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I will see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr. Verhofstadt against their empires <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving and it doesn't matter which language you use we are going and we are glad to be going we're off <laughs>